Hey there, Scipio here, and we're going to start off with the tail boom bracket assembly build video. So we're going to pull out our tail boom bag, which is bag B, and I'm just going to spread out all of these parts. Within it, as usual, are all the little tiny bags that, that are the subcomponents of the build. These will all be empty when we're done. Cleaning out my hardware with alcohol, just to make sure that all my screws uh, don't have any machine oil on them. And... Uh, don't lose these little shims. There's three little shims, these two little small ones, and then there's a larger one that you want to make sure you hang on to. Uh, but uh, that's it. Let's just get this stuff laid out, and then we're going to get to building. Now, I did look at Nick Maxwell's video, so you're going to see some similarities to that uh, when we start getting into setting bevel gears. So the one thing I really want to make sure that I do is this tail gear shaft is make sure that I chase those threads all the way down to the holes and make sure that there's no burrs or anything in there. Now normally there would be a set screw that goes in there, but there's actually a screw that's uh, part of the build that fits just fine. So it's actually easier than running a set screw through and back out, is I can just thread this longer screw in. It's the same, uh, I believe it's an M3 screw. Uh, it's the same size as the set screw. Go ahead and run it all the way through. Make sure you can see the screw poke through the hole you know that uh, all that metal is, is uh, cleared out, and then, uh, and then we'll be good to go with that. So uh, we're going to put this one, uh, you know, gear, uh, bevel gear onto the, uh, to the little uh, inside, I guess, that bevel shell assembly. And this, this is pretty straightforward. This is probably the simplest part of the heli build, if you ask me, other than setting the, uh, the bevel. Now, there's these little pins that go in. Don't use pliers. Uh, it's, it's tempting to try and force these through, but I found if you just wiggle that shaft as you push down, you'll get that worked in through the hole. But if you can do it without using a tool, uh, I think it'll save you a lot of headache in the long run because uh, there's a chance you could split that plastic if you try and force it with pliers or something like that. So now, uh, you know, thread lock onto the set screw. It's got a long ways to run through and actually you know, quite a bit longer on the other side of this. Uh, but, um, you know, I use probably more thread lock than I normally would, knowing it's going through. I got it tight. I backed it back out a little bit to kind of uh, re-grab some of that thread lock that it lost on the way and then send it back through. So I know people have, uh, have run it all the way down, pulled it out, added more thread lock. I'm not sure, you know, how much that makes a difference, but I just put an ample amount on there to make sure that I had some, and then, of course, cinch it down tight. Same thing with the other side. Uh, just use the little pin uh, and, you know, line up the hole as best you can to start with, and then as you push the pin through, you can wiggle that shaft, and now you've got a gear on the other end for, uh, for traction. You can wiggle that shaft, and uh, that pin will just slip right through. So I do know people that have used CA glue on the ends of the pin. Um, I did not do that. I think it'll be fine without it as long as the key here is getting that set screw all the way in and locked in tight to that pin. Uh, again, big blob of, uh, of thread lock on the end of that because you're going to lose a lot of it along the way. And then even if there's a little bit of thread lock that, uh, that hits that pin even better, that'll help lock that into place. All right, I did the same thing here. Uh, worked it all the way down to where it touched, backed it out a little bit, and then tightened it back down again. And then uh, finally, uh, snug it up solid. And there we go. That is our completed uh, gear assembly. And then so now, uh, taking a cue from Nick Maxwell's video, I'm going to go ahead and pull out one of the frame sides. It's actually on the next page, next part of the build. But I'm going to pull out the frame and then the screw hardware for the frame. And of course, I'll need the uh, the Torx driver that comes with the kit. And uh, basically, the, the thought here is that if you mount this tail boom uh, bracket to the frame, as you set the mesh and the bevel and, uh, and shim it up, it's going to be exactly the way it is in the heli. And uh, his justification for this, which makes sense, is, you know, temperature, uh, humidity, all those things are going to impact how that plastic is. And if you get it solidly mounted to the frame side, that it's not going to change at all once you get it set. So uh, I actually put these uh, frame spacers onto the frame first and then, you know, left them loose enough and then slipped the uh, boom bracket on top of it. It was easier to, 
me to do that than it was to put the spacers inside the bracket and then try and keep everything intact while I put screws in. So I get it on there and uh, I'm going to slip on these bearings on uh, on both ends of this assembly and uh, just slip it right into place there. And so uh, I want to take care of up and down play and then side to side play of this uh, bevel gear. So uh, I'll tell you right now what I ended up doing is uh, using uh, all of the shims that came with this. And really what you're trying to do on the on setting the bevel, as Nick Maxwell shows in his video, you want to get a straight line as you can uh, on this gear mesh. And I'll show you that in a little bit more detail once we get uh, these shims on. But this is going to shim that gear forward towards the heli a little bit. And when you test this, you have to kind of hold... Uh, that whole assembly sort of push it back where it's going to be uh, in place once it gets clamped down. But you can see, um, you know, I'm going to add shims to either side. And like I said, I ended up adding uh, two shims, you know, a shim on each side. That ended up being uh, the, uh, the best fit for my particular uh, assembly. Uh, it was perfectly fine centered. I just need to remove all of that play. So one shim on top and one shim on bottom did just that. All right, and then what we're looking for once we get everything together, uh, as I mentioned before, there's going to be a straight line made between the two bevel gears as they mesh. And I want that straight line to be as close as possible to perfectly straight. Now, the gears aren't perfectly uh, round, right? They're just a little bit out of round, so I can kind of see that move a little bit. Uh, but for the most part, generally, it's straight. And then I'm also looking for backlash. Just a tiny smidge of backlash, not too much, but everything's fine. Now, I'm going to use this Dry Fluid Extreme Gear Lube. It's the first time I've ever used this stuff. Uh, but uh, I think it's going to work out well. I was going to use silicone, but uh, I'm going to use this gear lube on everything on this heli. So I just put uh, a little bit, and then I used a brush to kind of spread it all around. And what I wanted to get was a really light coating uh, on all of the gear teeth. And uh, there we go. That's what it looks like. To put too much, it's just going to sling all around. Um, so, uh, you know, I just put what I thought was, was right. Now I'm going to slip the other side of this uh, bracket on, and then I'm just going to uh, to bolt down uh, the uh, bolt the bracket together. So there's some screws up front that I'm going to tighten all the way down, and those are actually going to hold that bevel shell in place. So those can be tightened all the way down. All the rest of the screws on this assembly I'm going to leave loose because I need to still be able to slide the tail boom in, and I'm not there yet, so uh, I'm going to leave them loose. But uh, we also need to add on uh, this servo mounting bracket, and that's going to go on the left side of the heli. So uh, just keep that in mind as you, uh, as you mount this. And there's little washers uh, that, uh, that will go uh, you know, in between the screws. And then uh, on the other side of this, are lock nuts. So no need for thread locker here with those lock nuts. They're the nylock nuts. Uh, so, but again, I'm not tightening them all the way tight uh, just so that later on I can get that tail boom in. And you can see the little space uh, that I'm leaving between uh, between the two assemblies, that daylight in there, uh, and everything's just kind of loose, exactly where I want it to be. So that's it, guys. That's the tail boom bracket assembly. It's about as simple as it gets. Um, just pay attention to that uh, that bevel uh, mesh. And, uh, you know, one other thing I want to talk about. I'm going to pause the video here for just a second. Uh, there is one other thing I want to talk about, and that is whether or not uh, you should uh, use thread lock on the bearings for that tail drive gear shaft. And my first instinct was... No. And then I thought about it more and I thought, well, maybe I should, uh, you know, put thread lock on the, on the metal shaft and then the, the inner races of the bearings to lock that kind of in place. 
it seems like a, a good best practice to do. The reality of it is, um, you know, I had a great conversation with Ben Miner. He's a Thunder Tiger team pilot. And I contacted him because I really respect his opinion when it comes to the build of these helicopters. And secondly, when I was researching uh, various threadlock com compounds and methodologies, uh, I can see stuff from, I don't know how long, eight or ten years ago from him on this subject. He's He's been fairly authoritative on the subject. So... Uh, I had a great phone call with him, and we talked a little bit about this. And, and uh, you know, in general, uh, I think his stance is going to be uh, that you can thread lock pretty much, um, you know, all of those inner races to keep everything secure. But the reality of it, of it is that, you know, we discuss it's a risk-reward sort of a situation. There are some places it's absolutely critical. You'll see that when I get to uh, setting the uh, the motor pinion bearing. Uh, that we're definitely going to thread lock to the to the motor shaft, uh, but this particular location uh, in the tail, uh, there isn't a whole lot of um, of wear to the shaft, and quite frankly, it's one of those parts you want to be able to take apart quickly in the field because you're more likely than not to do some tail uh, damage, which might cause you to have to change out those gears, and you know you don't want to have to worry about trying to find a vise or, or a press or something to get that taken apart. So it became a risk reward sort of a thing. The practical answer is, look, there's probably very little risk in not doing it. So I didn't do it there. Uh, you may choose to thread lock that, go for it. But uh, you know, like I said, I trust what Ben has to say. He's been very helpful as have some other uh, pilots. Uh, I've spent you know, quite, quite a bit of time uh, chatting with these guys. And uh, you know, I mentioned this before when I started the build. Uh, one of the things that sold me on the Thunder Tiger brand was the people behind Thunder Tiger. And it's just a great example where uh, where I can have these in-depth conversations about, uh, you know, best practices and the best way uh, to build this heli. And these guys are there 100% to support me. So uh, thanks, Ben. Uh, you know, thanks, Adam and Wes and Gary. You guys know. Uh, you've all been helpful to uh, to me in, in one regard or the other. So at any rate, that's it. Uh, I'll stop rambling and uh, we'll get on to uh, to the mainframe in the next video.